Greetings, you scientists, scientists, and citizens of the great, big, weird, wild, wonderful world in which we live. As always, I'm your humble science communicator, the great Orbax, coming to you from the Department of Physics at the University of Guelph. I'd like to welcome you to our September 2022 Stargazing Guide! This month marks the autumnal equinox, the day that we recognize as the start of that time of the year when the temperature dips, the leaves start to turn, and winter creeps ever closer. Astronomically, it also means that the sun starts setting a little earlier and rising a little bit later every day, giving us that much more time to stargaze. This month, we spot some easy-to-find planets, locate the Northern Cross, and lay our eyes upon the last full moon of summer. All this if we just take some time to look up. For the last few months, we've been tracking the Summer Triangle as it climbs in the sky. One of the vertices of the Summer Triangle is a star called Deneb, the brightest star in a constellation called Cygnus, the Swan. Within Cygnus is an easy to spot asterism within our September sky called the Northern Cross. Made up of five stars within the Swan, the Northern Cross lies high in the Northern sky after sunset. See if you can find it, junior scientists! One of the things that I love about September skies is the plants. As the air gets crisper, our gas giants Jupiter and Saturn are in clear view in the evening skies just after sunset. You might ask yourself, how do I know what I'm looking at is a planet rather than a star? Stars tend to flicker, whereas planets don't. If it has a bunch of red lights and it's blinking, you're actually looking at a planet. Look towards the east and the southeast just after sunset throughout September to see Jupiter and Saturn. And on September 26th, pay special attention because Jupiter will be in opposition, just like Saturn was last month. That means that the Earth will lie directly between Jupiter and the Sun, making Jupiter the biggest and the brightest that it will appear in the sky all year. The full moon this month is on September 10th, and because it's the closest full moon to the autumnal equinox, it's referred to as the harvest moon. The September full moon is often known as the corn moon or the barley moon and shines in or near the constellations of Aquarius and Pisces. The Mi'kmaq refer to this moon as the mating moon, as do the Cree nation of central Canada, who refer to it as Namitahawe Pism, the rutting moon. The time when the bull moose scrapes the velvet from its antlers is a sign that mating season commences. As I mentioned earlier, September 23rd is the first day of autumn and here's why. We all remember that the Earth is tilted at 23.5 degrees with respect to the line that's perpendicular to the plane of our orbit around the Sun. One Earth year corresponds to one full solar orbit. In December, we talked about the winter solstice. In June, we talked about the summer solstice. The solstice occurs in the day when we're either closest to or furthest away from the Sun due to that tilt of the Earth. These are the days where we experience the most daylight hours or the least daylight hours, the two extremes. Exactly halfway between the solstices, we have a day where we experience equal amounts of daylight and nighttime hours. This is the equinox. The autumnal equinox occurs on September 23rd this year and denotes the first day of autumn. After this point, our daylight hours will decrease until we reach the winter solstice in January. This phenomenon occurs again in six months when we've completed 180 degrees in our rotation around the sun in the springtime for the vernal equinox. There's actually a pretty cool experiment that you can try out at noon on the day of the equinox. If you take a vertical stick or a gnomon and measure the length of its shadow, the angle that it subtends will actually match your latitude. Look up the experiments of Eratosthenes, a Greek polymath who lived around 200 BC. Isn't it incredible, junior scientists? You're on a planet that traces a magical path throughout the cosmos, along with other planets that'll orbit our sun that join even more planets, around 100 billion other stars, to make up a galaxy that is itself only one of many. All of this beauty and wonder is yours to discover, junior scientists, and we're just getting started by taking some time to look up. See you next month, and don't forget to have a science-tastic day. Special thanks to Royal Sea Science's own planetary geochemist, Dr. Glynis Perrett, for her help preparing our stargazing guide. And the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada.